Great life, relationship with God, wonderful family, friends, a loving companion, laughter, joy, peace. On July 4, 2008, on a two-lane highway, a drunk driver collided with the car of Reverend Timothy Wright, killing his wife Betty and his 14-year-old grandson, DJ. Writer of over 800 songs in his career, loved by people all over the world. A Brooklyn-born legend in gospel music, taken from us on April 24, 2009, leaving an impression on us that will never be erased. Right Appreciation Day in Brooklyn, USA. Your over 900 gospel hits have helped choirs and churches to inspire congregations throughout this country and around the world. He's a songwriter, he's a musician, he's a preacher, singer. Twelve city and state officials, as well as the President of the United States. And he is truly recognized yeah. as the Godfather of gospel music across America. music history began when he was just 12 years old. That's when he started writing poetry and playing the piano at a church in Brooklyn, New York. And in 1976, he founded the renowned Timothy Wright Concert Choir. His stellar award-winning project with Myrna Summers, entitled We're Gonna Make It, is a classic today. A truly gifted man of gospel, the Reverend Timothy Wright. as well as the, the music industry. Yeah, well, as far as the music, people basically know that about him. Yeah. But on the other side, he was a great father. Yeah. He taught us everything we know, how to be men. Wow. And um, all my brothers, we've all grown up to have successful jobs and mm. successful families because of what my mom and my dad taught, taught us. Well, let's talk about some of your siblings. Uh, there's five of you guys. Right. No, no girls. No girls. Oh, my God. None at all. No girls. Uh, name your brothers. Well, the oldest is Danny. Then there's Donnie. We got, okay, let's, we got Danny. Danny. And what's his full name? Because y'all all have yeah, D well, names. His full name is Richard Danny. Right. Okay, Richard Danny Wright. Mm -hmm. And then you have Donnie, who's Timothy Donnie Wright. Okay. Then you have me, John David Wright. Okay. And then you have Derek, Robert Derek Wright. Okay. And then you have the baby boy, Paul Dwayne Wright. Wow. wow. All D's. All D's. Where, where, where did that come from? My father just did that. I, I think that was the first letter he learned when he was a baby <laughs> or something. And then you got some dogs. Yeah, he had two dogs, a dog named Duke and Doogie. <laughs> 
So he's a great dad. Yeah, he's a great dad, a great father. And after all the stuff he was doing on the road and traveling, making CDs, yeah. he still had time to make that personal family time with us. Wow. Give some love to the right family. My dad has a great ear. Um, he has a great ear for music, and uh, he has a he has a great way of making um, something simple sound great. You know, most of my dad's songs were very simple, maybe five six words, but but it stuck with you. Full name is Timothy. Donnie Wright Jr. Oh, you think you you think you're somebody special because you got your dad's <laughs> name, whatever. Uh, I wanted to ask you because mm -hmm. a lot of times parents have different relationships with each of the siblings. Yeah. What did your mom mean to you? What did First Lady Betty Wright mean to you? Uh, my mom to me, I was, I think I was one of her special projects. Okay. Uh, I say that because you know she, she did so much with my marriage, and keeping me you know, sh on the straight and narrow, you know, keeping me in front of the Bible, keeping me in the Word, you know, pre preaching to me and just doing all those motherly motherly things that, you know, every mom does. But she just kept, tried to keep me more in the Word okay. than anything else. Was she know. successful? Ah, uh, she was. <laughs> she was. And that's an honest statement. Yes, You know, she, she, she helped my marriage, mm -hmm. but without getting all in the middle of yeah. it and, and, and mm -hmm. being the monster mom yes, in law yes. and, and all that. Growing up when I was a kid, I was very, very hard-headed and very, very, um, I'm not going to say the bad apple, but I, I kind of do my own thing. And um, she's always uh, always stern with me and just made sure I, I kept on the right and up and up. Another one of her characteristics, she had a wonderful sense of humor. Oh my goodness, she's, she could have been on Def Jam for a Church of God in Christ movement or something. Uh, you miss her a lot. I do. I, I do. Um, Think about her every day? Every day. When an accident happened, she actually called every last one of us. Really? While she was on the road, she called. I was her last call that she had made. And I think she called Danny. Then she called me. Because it was 4th of July. She called to see what y'all made on the on the grill. You know, <laughs> what, you, what you could. How, how the kids doing. And, you know... Every time you speak to your mom, you know, especially when you speak to her every day, right. you're like, okay, okay, mother, all right. You know, you kind of rush off the phone, but you don't mean no harm no, by no, it. No, no, you no, no, no. I do just, it to my mom all the time. You know, you're rush, rushing off the phone, but if I can, you know, just go back and get five more minutes, you know. She said, be a father to your children. Because right now, there's so many young men that are not being real fathers to their children. And my mom despised that. Be a provider for your wife, treat them, treat them right, and they'll treat you right. My mom would always tell me, uh, 